Hey everyone, welcome to this week's video update. Today's Friday, June 23rd. Don't forget to join us Monday morning for the live streaming on Facebook and YouTube where we do our trade of the week and our contest of the week. Uh, let's jump into the trades that we that we did starting with Monday, June 29th, excuse me, June 19th. We, uh, we closed out a, our put side of the soybeans July position. So there's only four days to expiration. So we got a little bit of a down move, which helped us out. Uh, excuse me, we got a little bit of an up move that helped us out. And we were able to get a, a, an overall, a kind of a small profit on that, uh, on that soybeans position. So, uh, and then we also have the other uh, iron condor that's still on in soybeans. So you can see here, we've got a little bit more room to the downside before we need to adjust on that soybeans position, but that one's out in August, so we got a lot of time left there, about 28 days. So we will continue to monitor that. Next trade was in EFA. So this is the one I sent the video out on. We, uh, they, they ended up, EFA paid a dividend that they pay twice a year. It wasn't uh, reflected on the platform. So we didn't really know it was coming. So we got assigned uh, for, every, for every contract. So uh, you get assigned 100 shares of short stock. So we had four, got assigned 400 shares of stock. And so we took a, a, a small loss on that overall position. But if you haven't watched that video, uh, make sure you go back and do that if you don't understand getting assign, assigned stock. Bottom line is, if that happens, all you gotta do is just, just cover your position, get out of the whole thing, move on. Uh, those things happen every once in a while. Next trade was a uh, the closing trade for the QQQ strangle. So we only were in that for seven days. Got a nice contraction in IV, made over 30% of, of max profit in just seven days. Next trade was in uh, oil. So this was a uh, an opening adjusting trade. So we added another strangle in oil. Uh, IV wasn't over 50, but it was you know high enough to to put on that adjusting trade. And 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 I do like trading oil quite a bit because of the the risk reward and the bang for the buck that you get. So let's take a look at oil. So. Now we've got this adjusted strangle here, and if it keeps moving down, we'll make another adjustment. We'll roll our calls down again. We're not inverted yet, but our next move would be to go inverted on this. And in that August cycle, we've still got 24 days. So next week, uh, regardless if, if it moves down or up or whatever, we're probably gonna roll that one out. Early next week, we'll roll that one out to the September cycle. So, but the trade we were just talking about, this has 55 days to expiration, and this is, a, this is our new strangle. Still very centered, nothing to do here. So we'll continue to monitor that. Uh, there's, the, there's the video. So if, if you haven't watched the video about getting assigned a, a stock, it's, it's right there in the alerts. 21st, we didn't have any alerts. On the 22nd, we did a closing trade in wheat. So we closed that out for, uh, made over 30% of max profit in 14 days. Again, on these iron condors, kind of uh, the standard amount we want to look for is about 40% of max profit. But if we get 30 in less than 15 days, we'll, we'll go ahead and take that off. So we're completely out of wheat. Then we had an opening trade and, and I bought a put vertical in the ES, which is the S&P 500 future. Purely a directional trade to add short delta. Uh, our, our deltas were pretty flat, so I wanted to get something on that added a little bit of that short delta to help protect us from some downside if the market ever decides to go down again. It's kind of suspect whether that's going to happen or not, but um, so, so that's what we did there. I also mentioned uh, on the alert that you, can, you could have done this in SPY or SPX. I just like the risk reward that we got in ES, and, and I prefer to trade the the futures, but if you don't have futures permissioning, or you just prefer to, to do the uh, the equity options, you could have done that in SPY or SPX and, and accomplished the same thing. So this is just adding some of that short delta, a little bit of a short bias into our, into our overall portfolio. Next trade was a butterfly in Costco. So after the announcement of Amazon buying Whole Foods, a lot of these uh, grocers and, 
and other retailers got, got hit a little bit, which spiked the IV. In this one, we went with the July cycle with only 28 days to expiration, so that way we're out of the trade before they announce earnings. So if we take a look at Costco, see, still see we're very centered. Uh, implied volatility has gone up a little bit, which has pushed our profit, down, uh, profit line down, but still very centered. We obviously, we just put this on, so we'll continue to monitor Costco. You take a look at the chart. I mean, look at this, this huge downside. And, and the thought is, A, implied volatility is so high, and we're hoping it just kind of stabilizes around this price, giving us a chance to, uh, to take a profit on that butterfly. I looked at doing an iron condor as well, but just wasn't getting enough credit to make it make it worthwhile. So that's one of the other reasons I, I did the uh, kind of tighter, tighter butterfly instead. Next trade was an opening trade in RUT. So the uh, Russell 2000 index, implied volatility is at six, uh, looking to put on a calendar to benefit from an expansion in implied volatility. So we take a look at RUT and you can see IV's gone down since then even, it's down to one. So uh, the Russell definitely the strongest of the indices today. You can see up 0.61% at this time, whereas the Dow is barely up and ES is up about a quarter percent. So if we take a look at that, you can see Russell's already moved up a fair amount on us since we put the trade on, but uh, still well within our range. Remember, our first adjustment is if, if it gets to the break even, we're gonna add another calendar. So you wanna, you wanna keep that in mind as far as your position sizing. And if the rut is too big of a symbol for you to trade, you can always do the same thing in IWM. Okay, I just, I just chose rut because I like these big high priced index, indexes when we're doing these calendars. And, uh, and so that's why I chose rut, but you could sure do IWM to get your position size smaller as well. Next trade was a uh, strangle in QQQ. So going back to the well in QQQ, IV still over, IV percentile still over that 50 mark at 52. So we entered this one with 56 days to expiration. So if we take a look at the Qs, you can still see we just put this on, still very centered. So we will look for a potential contraction in implied volatility to, uh, to benefit this position. Next trade was in corn, so we needed to adjust corn. So our uh, we, we closed the call side out. We closed out a, a call vertical because price breached our downside. So if we take a look at corn, you can see we've got uh, we've got these two positions on now. So we've got the oh, got to reset this. Sometimes for whatever reason on toss you have to reset that. And then you can click on the appropriate uh, options. Okay, so here's here's where that looks like it breached our downside, took off our call side like we like we teach in the core. So looking for a little bit of a move back up in corn to to get out of that side. And then simultaneously we put on a new iron condor and we went out to September to collect some more credit, widen our break evens, and and add a little bit to that trade. So that was the uh, that was the second alert that went out on corn. So the first was an adjusting close, next was an adjusting open. So those are all the alerts for the week. Let's go back and take a look at some of the other positions that we that we still have on. I mentioned oil, yes, soybeans, uh, DIA. We still have this, uh, the call side of our DIA iron condor. So we, we took the put side off after it breached our break even here. So I'm looking for a little bit of a down move in DIA to, uh, to benefit on that one. Still got a strangle in Microsoft. So it's just been kind of hanging out up here. Need a little bit of a down move in, excuse me, down move in Microsoft and a little bit more theta decay. And we'll uh, we'll take that position off. Got a long, got a long time before earnings. So no, uh, no issues with, with earnings on that one yet. And let's see, I mentioned Q and rut. So that's it. So hope everybody has a great weekend. And we'll talk to you Monday morning at Navigation Trading Live on Facebook or YouTube. See you then.